Hello, this is Lucian Miller from Innovative Designs, and in this video we're going to show you the proper technique for soldering bullet connectors onto motor leads. Uh, what we're going to be using today, uh, we've got a Scorpion 3014 motor here that has uh, an older style uh, bullet connector on it, and we want to replace that with the more traditional standard 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors. So uh, what we're going to do in this video is show you the proper procedure for removing the old bullet connectors and also how to install the new ones. To begin the process, what you're going to want to do is uh, remove the heat shrink that's already on the uh, bullet connectors. And uh, X-Acto knife is the best tool for doing that. What you want to do is slice down through the uh, heat shrink and be careful not to cut through the wires. Back on this part, I kind of push down just enough to maybe cut halfway through the wires. And then when I get to this part here over the bullet connector, push down really hard in order to get all the way through it. And then you can come in um, and split that apart and then pull it off. And then we'll go ahead and repeat that process for the other two connectors here and so we can expose the wires and the uh, bolt connectors so we can uh, take them off and solder the new ones on. So again just uh, pry that open and pull it back on all three of them like this. And now uh, we're ready to go ahead and unsolder those and uh, be able to change them. Whenever you solder bullet connectors, it's important that you have a good soldering iron. And uh, I like using uh, a 40 watt uh, soldering iron with a nice wide chisel tip. Uh, that way you get maximum heat transfer into the bullet connector. Uh, you want to heat the part up, have the solder melt, get in there as quick as you can, pull the wire out, you know, so you, the, the worst thing you can do is have a soldering iron that's too small where you have to be heating it for like 20 or 30 seconds in order to make the, uh, the solder melt. So the proper way to do it is to have the right size soldering iron. And also, you want to have a good solder. This is a uh, uh, rosin core, 1 32nd inch diameter solder. It's 63% uh, tin and 37% uh, lead alloy really great solder for doing electronics work and uh, you can just tear off a piece off the roll. Uh, whenever you use your soldering iron you always want to make sure you always brush it off on your wet sponge to clean the oxidation off because it the the solder oxidizes on the iron within about 10 seconds after you uh, wipe it off. You always want to put a little bit of solder on your iron and then hold it to the side of the bullet connector like that and just wait and it'll take about five or six seconds for the uh, solder to start to melt and then once it melts you can pull that wire out and uh, that's how you take them off. Now I'm going to go, go ahead and repeat this process for the other uh, two soldering uh, connectors there. Okay now we've got all of the old bullet connectors off the motor here and we've got the bare leads one thing to remember uh, on Scorpion motors is the motor leads that are on the motors are actually extensions of the stator windings themselves. After the bundles of wire are wrapped around the stator, they're brought out of the motor and heat shrink tubings put over them. So this wire actually is the enamel coated wire that the stator is wound with. So you never ever want to cut these wires off. If you cut the wire off and you lose the tinned part on the end, the only way to make this uh, wire solderable is to tin each individual strand separately. Now in a motor like this 3014, uh, there's probably 10 or 12 strands of wire in here. Okay, on some of the bigger uh, like HK4035 motors, there can be as many as 60 or 70 individual strands of wire in each one of these motor lead bundles. And that's a very tedious job, so you never ever want to cut these wires. Always heat the 
uh, bullet connector up, pull it off, and leave these tinned ends intact on the uh, on the motor leads. Uh, so now we've got our three bullet connectors and the three pieces of heat shrink that came in our uh, bullet connector kit. And uh, next we'll show you the proper way how to solder those onto the uh, motor. For soldering the bullet connectors on the motor, I'm going to use my little solder jig board that we talked about in one of the earlier solder videos. This is just a piece of uh, 1x4 pine wood that I had laying around. And I've drilled a series of holes in it so I can plug different bullet connectors. Like I have a set for 3.5 millimeter plugs, a smaller hole for the male pin and a bigger hole for the female pin. And then I also have one for the 4 millimeter and the 6 millimeter bullet connectors as well. Now one extra step that I'm going to show you here, a little thing I like to do, on the motors where the leads are kind of small in diameter, I like to put an extra piece of heat shrink on the leads here, right at the very end. And what this does is it helps to strain relief the ends of the wires and also gives uh, makes the wire a little bit bigger in diameter so that when you put this piece of heat shrink on later on and it shrink down, it shrinks tightly around here. Um, this piece of heat shrink, they, they typically shrink down about two to one and if you go to put that on this small a wire, it's not going to shrink down tight. But if you put a smaller piece of heat shrink like this on first to increase the diameter of the wire, then um, it's going to make the second piece of heat shrink fit better. So I'm going to line these all up so they're just a little bit short from the end there. And then I'm going to come in with my heat gun and shrink these down on the end of the wire. Okay, now you can see how, where I've got this heat shrink, the wire is quite a bit bigger in diameter than it was originally. Okay, now we have the leads on the motor prepped here, and we're going to actually start soldering the bullet connectors. Again, always remember to wipe off your soldering iron and put a little bit of solder on the end there so you get good contact with the part. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pre-tin the bullet connectors. We're going to heat that up for about five seconds, wait for it to get hot, and then You'll notice I'm not actually touching the soldering iron. I'm dipping the solder actually into the cup of the bullet connector. Because I don't want the solder to melt on the iron, I want it to melt from the heat of the bullet connector itself. That way you make sure that the part's hot enough to receive the solder. Now I'm going to fill this up probably about three quarters of the way full, right about like that, until um, I have a nice full cup of solder. And then I'm going to bring the, uh, the motor in and I'm also uh, going to wipe my iron off again, put some fresh solder on, and then pre-tin the motor lead. This is very important. You always want to have the exact same solder on the wire as you're using in the bullet connector. Because if you have dissimilar solders, sometimes they're not going to flow together as well as they should. So now that I've got the, the, that wire pre-tinned, again, clean the iron, put a little bit of solder on it, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reheat the solder to get it to flow and then dip this wire down in and then dip it up and down a couple times to make sure I got good flow and then hold it perfectly still for about 10 seconds to allow it to cool and you'll see it uh, it'll go from a shiny to a very light satiny finish and when it does that you'll know that the uh, the solder has hardened and then uh, pull that out of there and now if you zoom in on that, you, you can see how we have a really nice solder joint. And you can see this fillet that comes up, up to the wire. That, that shows you, and then we'll flip it here to the other side. You see how that solder is coming up the wire? That uh, shows you that the solder is completely impregnated the wire. It's flowing nice up out of the cup, and you've got a perfect solder joint there. Next thing we'll do is I'll go ahead and solder the other two uh, bullet connectors on the same way. Okay, now we've got all three uh, bullet connectors soldered on. And one of the most important steps now that most people neglect to do is to clean the bullet connectors off. If you look on this one, if you zoom in there, you can see how there's some flux. That the flux will drip out the little hole that's in the side of the bullet connector and it'll ooze out and sometimes it'll actually drip down and get into the spring finger contacts. Now when you're done 
you should, the spring finger contacts here should spin freely, like that one's spinning real free, but this one here won't turn. And the reason is because some flux got down in there in between the little spring fingers and the center post of the bullet connector. And if you leave that in there, you can actually get a complete loss of electrical contact on that bullet connector, and it, you, you, it just will not pass electricity. And when that happens, it can cause the motor to just sit there and chatter back and forth, and it can burn up your speed controller. So the proper thing to do is just one at a time, just dip them in a little bit of alcohol. I'm just using some uh, denatured alcohol here. Uh, this stuff's made by Clean Strip. You can, you can purchase this at Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace Hardware, any kind of home improvement store. Um, it's sold right where the rest of the paint thinners are. And I've just got a little epoxy cup here. I just poured a little bit down in there. And what you do is you just kind of wiggle it around in there a little bit, spin the spring finger contacts. And typically what you're going to want to do is dip each one two or three times and spin them. And then to get the excess out, I just use a little can of compressed air and just blow on them to clean the excess out. And then you do the same thing with the next one. Now, this yellow one before wouldn't spin at all, and now it just broke free from the, uh, the alcohol getting into that flux. So we want to spin it a few times. You'll typically want to do this three or four times, and what this does is it makes sure that you get all of the flux out of there so that you don't have any kind of contamination, and then we'll blow the excess out. And now the, this black one had a little chunk there on the side. I can just pop that off with my fingernail before I even start. And we'll just dip that down in there again, spin those spring finger rings, and then blow it out with the compressed air. And now all of these spring fingers spin nice and free, and we know we're going to get really good contact with them, and we won't have to worry about shorting out our speed controller. Uh, and the, the final step is going to be to uh, put the heat shrink on and uh, shrink that down. Okay, now that we've got our connectors nice and clean, we're ready to put our pieces of heat shrink on. Now, every once in a while when you do this, you'll get a little glob of solder that'll be on the side of the uh, connector, and sometimes that'll make the heat shrink hard to get on. It won't fit right. If you ever do that, you can take a pair of flush cutting uh, diagonal pliers here and just kind of scrape it off the surface like that. Uh, and you can cut that little bit of solder off. And then just take a small uh, needle file, and if you have any little rough edges, you can just clean them up a little bit like that. Now, uh, once you have them ready, you take your little pieces of heat shrink and just slip them on each lead like that and get it lined up right with that shoulder at the back side of the bullet connector. And once you get them all aligned, you just come in with your heat gun. And we're going to heat just the top part for right now to make sure that we got the alignment. Because if you, you do that, you can still kind of tweak them a little bit to make sure that they're exactly where you want them. And then when you're happy about the position, you can come back in and shrink it down the rest of the way. Now, a heat gun is the proper tool to use for shrinking the, the heat shrink tubing. A lot of guys will like using a, a butane cigarette lighter. And, you know, in a pinch at the field, you can do that. Uh, but it's best if you use a heat gun. And uh, now that we've got them all uh, done, uh, you know, it looks like that. We're ready to uh, plug this motor in and use it now. So that finishes up our job of uh, soldering the new bullet connectors on this motor. Hopefully you found some information in this video to be useful and you know the proper techniques to use now to solder bullet connectors uh, on a motor. Uh, be sure to check out the rest of our videos that we have online. Uh, they're all on our website at www.innovativedesigns.com or you can see them on YouTube uh, and our YouTube uh, account is called Innovative8. Uh, so you can check them out there. And if any of you guys out there have a suggestion that you'd like to see for a video and uh, or an idea that you'd like to see us uh, do a how-to video on, send us an email to sales at innovativedesigns.com. And uh, if we see an idea that looks good, we'll go ahead and produce a video for it and uh, publish it here on our site. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you all next time.